This is the Can Crushers Wrestling Podcast. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Let's go nuts! It's Jimmy Nuts! Five out of the door! With your host, Mark Martinez. Because I'm the Mark and I'm awesome! The Guru. Today I'm going to break it down for all you simpleton sweat hogs listening out there in Can Crusher Nation. I don't mean to come out here week after week and toot my own horn, but toot, toot. And the English Professor. It is I, the English Professor from the County of Kings, speaking the English of the Queen. Hey, this is former WWE superstar Duke, the Dumpster Drossy, and you are listening to the Can Crushers Podcast. And welcome back to another Can Crushers Spotlight. I am your host, Mark the Mark Martinez, and I am flying so No, I'm not. I have a special guest this week to come on and talk IWC Fight Night. Yes. You guys are going to be amazed with the wealth of knowledge that she has about IWC and how much she watches or doesn't watch wrestling when it's happening at the Elizabeth Court Time Sports. It is one, the only super fan, Megan Nelson. Yeah, how does this happen? Well, we're going to talk about that. How does Megan get to come on Can Crushers as a honorary member to talk about IWC Wrestling. Well, we have a past. The past will be revealed. You'll get to know this. It's a great story how we met. So let's dive into this once we come back after our collar and elbow commercial. And you guys know how it happens with collar and elbow. Hats, hoodies, tees, all great merchandise from collar and elbow. And we have a discount code. Can Crushers. All one word, smashed together. Capital C and can, capital C and crushers. And you will save... 10% from Collar and Elbow with all the great merch that they have from Al Snow and his homeboys down there. So we'll send it out to Al, and when we come back, we'll have Megan Nelson on the show as we recap IWC Fight Night that just happened this past weekend in Elizabeth. Wrestling. A love and a passion we all share. I've started a wrestling brand, the wrestling brand. A brand founded on the aspects of wrestling. Two entities working together to create a product that connect emotionally for people everywhere. Collar and Elbow is the brand. Passion and love for wrestling is the drive. I am Al Snow, and this is Collar and Elbow, the wrestling brand. Hi, this is Julia Lynn, AKA the Dime Piece, and you're currently listening to the Can Crushers podcast. I guess you should pay attention because I mean, they asked me to be a part of it. And welcome back to Can Crushers. Guys, if you'd known how long that we talked prior to recording, uh, it's been half an hour, maybe 45 minutes. Nonetheless, coming on the show, doing the IWC Fight Night critique with me is the one, the only, Megan Nelson. Megan, there's so many things I wanted to put into that. But I thought, no, you, you need a good introduction first, and then I'll just throw you under the bus the rest of the show. You are so kind, Mark, because typically you give me shit every show, and now I can kind of give my points, or I can just give you shit right back. So let's bring it on. It was a great weekend, and you were missed. I I know. I'm, I'm always missed. You know what I really missed? I, one, I missed your shit, and two, <laughs> my Jenny Plummer hug. That Aww. breaks my heart when I don't get a Jenny Plummer hug. Those are the best hugs I know. You you're missing a lot of hugs. So hopefully next month all the hugs. Well, yes, for sure. I have tickets in hand already for yes. October seventeenth, August seventeenth. I'm already pushing ahead because we've talked about October's event already. But nonetheless, we'll get there. <laughs> Holy moly! Yes. 
I'm drinking, by the way. I don't know if you are. I have just the normal Miller Lite in front of me because that's just the way it's rolling tonight. I was going to cut my grass, but we already talked about this. We we did. We lead such exciting lives um, between naps and cutting grass. <laughs> right. And uh, <laughs> our jobs. But no, I'm just drinking a bottle of water right now. Oh, you're being the adult. I'm glad. Good for you. I'm, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I wasn't so much of an adult on Saturday. So, yeah, so water it is. You weren't an adult on Saturday, but we'll get there because I want to tell everybody <laughs> how we met because you're always brought up on the show. You're always this, that, or the other. We tag you. We throw you under the bus, but it's all for love. You get, you have a great um, segment for us bringing it back when we talk about IWC on the podcast, but we met out of chance, legitimately, right? Yeah. Do you remember? We did. I almost got killed by a table. <laughs> The night I met all of you guys. Yes. Yes, and it was after you almost got killed by a table, you turned around, and the first words you said to me after we got done laughing and making sure that you're okay, you're like, I love your sweatshirt. It was my Hasbro um, shirt that I had with all the wrestling figures on it. Yes. Yes. The whole crew was there, and that was the first time I met you guys, and you guys have been giving me shit since. We, we have. And I even had an accusation during a certain match that was thrown my way, and I did not do that, but that we can talk about that another time. Yeah, because we're going to start our own podcast. We, we've, we've come <laughs> to terms with that. Just you guys can listen to us talk about uh, our naps and cutting grass. And exactly. Whatever, Such wild lives. Whatever else we do. Um, but then we, we instantly became friends. I can say we're friends because yes, there was a bunch always. of hooligans on the left-hand side of us. And unbeknownst to me, you were ready to slay all of them the first night. And you were proud to say, I'm going to kill those kids. <laughs> okay. <Are> we- <laughs> Hi, my name's Mark. Oh, you're going to jail tonight. Cool. <laughs> yeah, well, everybody, let's just go to jail tonight and have a good time. Makes You're, for a good story. Yeah, it does. It does. So Saturday night, um, I was scheduled to be there, but then I accidentally got scheduled to work until 6, which really sucks. Uh, mm. So I, I only would have made it down there at 8.30, missing the first hour and a half, missing the party before. But this is why I thought I can only call one person, because I know she's the party planner. Megan, what happened at the parties? I, f- I feel like I should be on E! Entertainment TV talking about the Oscar um, party, <laughs> what's going on before. So it was quite a night. No. Um, so, you know, there's a bunch of us. Shout out to the eccentric section, the eccentric Woo-hoo! podcast. Shout out to the front row, cr- front row crew of, um, oh, God, Bradley Kaler, Paige, Brittany, um, Kayla, Bradley, Andrew. I mean, that whole group. Um, they were there, and also ECW reference to Brad Kaler. If you catch it, let us know on Facebook. Um, you know, we all created kind of our own little family, our own little friendship, and then of course my friends. And we just had a really awesome tailgate. And um, shout out to Paige for the yummy peach drink. And we just had a great time BSing for the show. We even had um, we even had the Gambino show up in terms what? of all of our alcohol. I know. And um, can't reveal much, but they did pop in and they drank all of our alcohol. Um, they also tried to steal our money. They tried to get us into some numbers, some gambling rings, a lot of stuff going on. We just had to say no. At least I did. But, um, yeah, so they showed up. Um, something else pretty cool with um, the before show shenanigans was shout out to brotherly love, which is the tag team of Ricky Dawkins and Cliff Klepto. You would not believe what goodies they had. I they heard had, they had cheesesteaks that were amazing. Yeah. So bro- brotherly love, they were like, you know what? We're going to make cheesesteaks whiz cheesesteaks for everybody. And they were a hit. So <sighs> Shout out to them. I mean, Candice LeRae, when she got her start in wrestling, she'd make cupcakes and sell them. So cheesesteaks, I mean, look where she is. Yeah. Look where these guys might be. So um, the cheesesteaks were a hit. 
we heard rumors of wrestlers going out and getting some cheesesteaks before the show. So, yeah, again, shout out, which we'll say 20 million times tonight <laughs> to various people, but shout out to Brotherly Love and their Philly cheesesteaks. And it was quite a Philly night again with Brotherly Love and then also Bill Alfonso um, in attendance. And we'll which get we'll to talk that. about. Yeah. We will get to that. But no, that was the pre party. So, if anyone sees us, Pop by, say hi, but just don't drink all of our alcohol like the Gambinos. Yeah, this isn't going to be a, a – I'm going to change the name of this. This isn't going to be a Can Crusher spotlight. This is going to be a Can Crusher shout-out with you, Megan, I'm sure. Just shout out <laughs> everybody. Name, name drop it everywhere. Name, Mark wasn't there, so I'm going to take care of this. This is – it's fine. That's, that's why I called you. Mark wasn't there, so I'm going to shout out the other podcast. Yeah. <laughs> they no. showed up. <laughs> oh, that I'm one kidding. hurt. <laughs> Well, it was, nice having, it was nice having you on, Megan. Hey, thanks for having me. Bye. Have a great day, and I'll catch you next week. Yeah. <laughs> what do we talk about? Doing laundry. Yeah, right? And um, and what dish soap is best? Yeah, well, Dawn Blue. That's I, done. It does. It saves ducks. It does save ducks. So we finally get into the ring. We finally get into the ring. Action is ready to start. And the first match is a six-man match between Mandime... Zach Nystrom and Tito, which is an amazing team, uh, against RC, mm-hmm. Cole Carter, and Apollo. And of course, the one, the only dime ah. piece is led out in. Mm. Hello, Julia. I, Once know. I know, I know you, you're not going to be as happy as myself or Supar, but damn, we love dime piece. Who doesn't? I have to say, for those that watched it on the network on Fight TV, you got to see the way, like, first match of the night, first person to walk through that curtain was Dime Piece. And, man, look at that entrance. It was just, bam, here I am. So, yeah. And, and we have to talk about her outfit. Or lack thereof, once again. <laughs> it was... It was gold hot pants and an awesome top, and she just looks stunning as always. So, shout out to Dime Piece. Yeah, she, great, great friend of the show. Uh, she, she actually texts once in a while. I didn't hear what you guys thought of me. Or, da, 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 oh, please, please, Dime Piece, you know what we think of you. We love you. And she is the leader of Money Shot, mm-hmm. as much as the uh, man Dime might think he is. She's running that show. You know what? I would agree. Um, and also, you know, she's not going to tolerate anyone talking bad about her boys. No. So I'm going to have to um, pay attention because I don't want get, getting called out by her for not also defending her boys because her and I are friends. So it kind of puts me in a, in a rough situation. But one thing I wanted to call out is you had Money Shot come out with Dime Peace, but no A1. So A1, you are missing an action. Yeah, why? You were missed. Young Tony. I know. Young Tony. So I think Young Tony may have some matches um, he's thinking about, preparing for. So I, I'm kind of excited to see what Young Tony does next month. The cool part of this match was Nick Lendl got to introduce himself, walking out <laughs> with Apollo, Cole, and RC. And Lendl was pretty stoked. He's still posting it as of last night which is Tuesday, that he got to announce himself. So Lendl, Lendl <laughs> a little eccentric himself. Oh, personalities all coming out. You know, he has a, has a brush with um, his own greatness. And, mm. But the match itself, the match itself was amazing. Megan, you hear us all the time that there's people in IWC that shouldn't be in IWC anymore. And... There was a few in this match, and we mean this nicely. Mandime and Nystrom are a tag team. As much as we love Bill Collier, and we'll get there at the end, they can go and they can run AEW. They could be on NXT. They sure as shit would star on WWF Raw or SmackDown. They, they're they just ready for that next level because they're so good in the ring. And as much as... Uh, come on, guys. Everybody knows IWC is a family. Uh, they're such bastards, but they're good people as well. Yeah, they are like good bastards. I don't know how to describe it. That's a I think perfect word. I, 
I think because, you know, I think because they are so clever in the ring and their ring psychology together and their chemistry has just, I mean, goodness sake, it, they're on it. That's why they're the champions. And yeah, you'd bring up a good point about AEW. Let's mention real quick before we continue with the match, August 11th and 13th, there's going to be some um, AEW tapings in Pittsburgh. So if you have not bought tickets, buy tickets. But also there's supposed to be some dark tapings. And as you know, a lot of IWC talents are alumni of AEW Dark. So I think maybe next show, Mark, why don't we do an AEW Dark bingo card and write down who we think may show up at AEW Dark in Pittsburgh in August. I love that. That is a great idea. Can you have, like, Kyle or somebody make up the bingo cards and I'll ring the daubers? Well, yeah, right? Well, it's going to be a blank. <laughs> Shout out to Kyle. A blank bingo card, and we are going to write in who we think oh, oh, oh. is going to show up. So, okay. um Okay, I, now I know the game. I thought you were actually going to have bingo cards with everybody's name that we win once they show up. But you want to oh, do yeah. it the old school way of you have to make your own card. You're going to make your own card, yes. So it can okay. be, yes, we're going to make our own card. But whatever whatever you choose to do. But hopefully the talent that we see in the ring in the six-man tag. I mean, again, let's talk about R.C. Dupree. Wardlow many times said one of his favorite opponents ever was R.C. Dupree. Yeah. So a, a lot of talent. Cole Carter, again. It, Cole Von Erich, if you get it right. Yeah. <laughs> Baby on Von Erich, exactly. I know. It's. Yeah, so I'll let you continue, but yeah, this is an exciting, exciting way to kick off the show. No, there's no continuing. You're running with this. Uh, you, you are kind of the host, and I'm just here putting my two cents in. That's <laughs> I'm a know. typical woman like me, just talking. Away. Yeah, just let me go. <laughs> I'm busting through this can't crush your door and going. Bring it home, Mark. No, it's a huge win for uh, Team Money Shot and Tito. Tito is so great. Just the muscle mm. of IWC. He has taken, again, no disrespect for Bill Collier, which we'll get there. But he has taken that Wardlow muscle and compacted it, and he is the next big thing in IWC. Ooh, I like how you explain that. That's a great way to think about him. Yeah. yeah. It, I'm excited. I mean, all the talent in the ring. Yeah. T, t, oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. See? Exactly. Sometimes I know my stuff, Megan. When it comes to IWC, if you listen to me talk about SmackDown or Raw or what the hell is going to happen in Money in the Bank, which we can touch on maybe a little bit at the end of this, um, I lost bad on my picks. Bad. Mm. That's a shame. I mean, were you actually able to watch Money in the Bank or I, did um, Peacock, I, um, the Cock Network, um, screw you? The, the Cock gave it to me, but I watched it to Monday when I got out of work. You yep. need a foreign VPN like some people I know. <laughs> like some people. Um, no, I'm all right not watching it live on Sundays because, you know, 3 o'clock in the morning is way too early um, oh, to, be wow. wa- to be spending some time watching WWE. Yeah. Yeah. If it was AEW, I'd yeah. call off work. Or IWC, I'd call off work. WWE, yeah, I it's always the next day. Well, you know, you didn't call off work. You went to work and you missed the entire show. I, I did not miss the entire show. I got home and watched it on the great streaming. You were able to watch it. On, on, that's true. On two to one media with Jeremy and the boys and gals. Yes. Yes. So, but you weren't there. I know. But my return is in August. All right. Next matchup is <laughs> the main. Oh, wait, did you talk about who won? I did. I said that the money shot and Tito won. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Big win. Big win. Uh, next team up is the runway, and they're taking on the main event. And let me say, holy shit, the models that Calvin and Tyler brought out, stunning, but not as stunning as Julia. Dime piece. <laughs> not at all. Um, I was mad about this match. I really was. Um, Gannon and Duke hate me, so I, I will just go this way continuously. I've always not been a fan of the main event because they're the ones that pretty much eliminated the fraternity from IWC. And oh, I, I hold you grudges. gotta get over it. I hold you gotta grudges. get over it. No. Plus I I am in love with Tyler and Calvin. So Oh, I, that's right. I, oh yeah. I am a runway mark. Legitimately. 
you know, see, I was, con- well, I mean, I, I can't be conflicted because TME was my um, first ever match when I started going IWC. So I have a soft spot for TME, for Gannon and Duke, big fan, big fan. So obviously that's where my alliance was. So I think you and I are having a conflict right now. We would clash. We would clash all the time yeah. over this. No. Oh. Although, the main event, amazing. Another tag team. They've been. But they need to go away as well from IWC. But come back and meet us every once in a while. They can Hell be anywhere. No. They, are, they are here to stay. They are on a crusade. So for those that have followed social media before this event, it's all about booking more tag matches. You guys, they are, they are out for blood with every tag team out Damn, in Heel wrestling. Bradley. Yeah, and Heel Bradley, too. That's another thing for those, again, on social media. You probably saw um, Heel Bradley get um, almost, he almost passed out dead. <sighs> Because he got threatened for more tag matches by Duke. So, Smiley Duke can still be Smiley Duke, but man, he is, there was venom. (laughs) He wants more tag matches. And um, unfortunately, our boys, your boys, they were the wrath of that venom in this match. They were. The, they were. The TME is finishing finisher. I wonder each and every month how they're going to pull it off, who's going to take it. And it just, it continues to get better and better and better. I feel it in my bones. Now, by saying I hate them, I don't. I love them. They, they are they, they are. <laughs> you just wonderful. don't want to get the Bradley treatment. Now you're backtracking. I want, Andy yes, Duke's I don't want the Bradley. Backtracker. I am a backtracker. I don't want the Bradley treatment. I do always want more tag team matches. Um, Come yes. on. I, Rock and Roll Express, Midnight Express, British Bulldogs. I'd watch those over Stone Cold half the time. So... But yeah, the, I think we like authentic tag teams. Yeah, you know that's why we like that's why we um, like Money Shot, and, that's and what, I think TME in the runway. In the runway, yeah. Come on, they're the best dressed. You know, I'm loving the glitter. I want to be a runway girl. You yes, we talk about what you need to do in IWC all the time, and I've thrown some out, <laughs> and we'll get the one that I've thrown out in a long in a minute here. But oh god, yes. You should be with the runway. <laughs> I I can um uh, you know they need women of all sizes so um come on yeah. you, you have a great in with the owner Jenny Plummer so you, you <laughs> need it because Justin's just there um this has to happen this oh man has to happen yes and you could have Heel Bradley in a dress too because that would fit. Well, I mean, if he's going to do it, then I'm definitely going to do it. So right. let's bring it on. Because Kaler would do it yesterday. I'm not even worried about him. Because he would instantly, <laughs> boom, throw me in a dress. Okay, I'm good to go. Yeah. I, I mean, it hit, he would take a lot of planning into his. His would be inspired by something, I think. Because he's themed all the time. Probably the Whitney Houston bodyguard. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. So, yeah. So there was a match, um, everybody. <laughs> go ahead. You can tell us about the match. I'll let you do it because um, I, I think you need to talk about what happened to your team. They got decimated. Yeah. Period. They did. They just got decimated. Uh, but I hope this is not a one-off for the runway. Because you see them. They're tenacious. They can bounce back. They, they can come back around. And knowing the runway from other organizations... Their manager spokesman was also around tonight on color with Joe Dombrowski, Mr. BC Seal. And he was putting it over. He was putting them over real well. So I wonder if there's going to be a reunion in IWC. Very interesting. Look at you. Yeah. Big fan of BC Steel, too. Shout out. (laughs) Shout out. You didn't shout out anybody in this match, so I figured I better shout out somebody. No, yeah, no, that's good. That's good. Yeah. We'll keep the shout outs to a minimum. Well, you get the shout out in the next match because it's a women's match and it's Allie Catch. A lot of you might know her as Allie Cat, but she's thrown that away and she is a hardcore wrestler now, taking on IWC's own Queen of the Silver Screen, Katie Arquette, the champion. Always love a Katie Arquette match. Shout out to Katie Arquette. <laughs> Damn it. You're trying to take the shout out away from this match. I took it away. Um, oh, such a great, such a great women's match. Um, we know 
you know, they're, they're, I mean, you have to, the, the hotbed of talent that we have, I'm going to call it maybe the Lake Erie region. You know, you have Cleveland, you have Buffalo, you have Pittsburgh and parts of West Virginia. A lot of times, um, you know, these women, they make their rounds, you know, wrestling against each other. This was, this was just such a great match. And man, Katie was just quick this entire match. Um, just the agility. She's flying throughout this match. I thought that it was kind of a different style match for her. Yeah, you don't... Allie kind of brought it to Katie for a while, doing the whole, mm-hmm. like, the God, Shin, Robinson, and Ganya type of wrestling. And yeah, Katie kind of, of holds. Yeah, Katie kind of switched over to that, but then brought it to the next level where you saw a little hardcore Katie. And yeah, I loved it. We, we've, me and you and the rest of the boys have seen great women from first match until now, have it be Raylan or Britt or Katie or, you know, the, the, the list can go on and on. And it's sometimes these women steal the show. And this was one of my favorite matches of the night just because of that. You just see Katie grow more and more and more and more. And John's in love with Katie. So I always like kind of back up about Katie's matches because he just spews all the time. So I kind of watch other things during Katie's matches because I know that I will have the match covered by somebody else. So I watched outside the ring as I normally do. And this is when shout out to Megan Nelson on the outside of the ring. <laughs> uh, were you, you one, you were gabbing two, you were staring at maybe a man across just giving him um, devilish playful eye. What were you doing in this match besides uh, watching the match? I, I didn't see any men from across the way, but um, if there were, Hey, my, my row of friends that were to the other side of, you know, Kayla and Brittany, they're major alley catch fans. That's their girl. So the whole time they're just in awe of Allie. They're talking about Allie. They're taking pictures of Allie, sending it to her one from Brandon who couldn't be there. So it was just all about, all about Allie, just listening to my friend Mike talk and just laughing. And, um, and I have to say, I'm in love with Allie's outfit. I think I might want to buy that for myself. And um, it was just us having a good time in awe of this match. And, and then paying attention to it as well. But I wish I could say that I had a had a guy in my sights. And that's what brought that smile to my face. But um, no, not during this match. Not Sorry. During, it, so you said not during this match. Was there one <laughs> during a match then that we should know about when we get there? I don't know. We'll see. Oh, okay. Um, so are you already planning your Halloween outfit? Is that what you want? You want to go Halloween in as Alley Catch this year? I wouldn't even think about that. I think I might want to go as Abaddon from oh, AEW. Yes. She's my girl crush. I and think I might go as Abaddon. And that's what we should do for an after party in October. We all dress up? Yeah. We all come to the event, and then we go to the after party dressed up. John will probably be Jinder Mahal. Um, you could be Abaddon. Yes. I, I pull off Arn Anderson real well because I have the balding spot, the beard the glasses. I'm a little chunky. So all I have to do is wear uh, some of Bradley Ruthers khakis and a polo shirt, and I'm good. Actually, Bradley Ruthers wore jeans this last show. (sighs) But he always has a polo, is where I was going. He does. He definitely has the polo, just not khakis. So we just got to make sure you're very authentic. Your friend's very authentic to this costume. Right. So that's what I think we're going to do with the after party. We really have to talk to Jenny about this. It's going to be a we have to have a dress up. I'm supportive event. of this idea. So while we're still on the while we're still on the women's match, we do need to talk about this. Could be nationally, this could be regionally. Who are some other contenders you see for Katie's title? Mm. Well, you, you can't leave out Raylan. You can't Correct. leave her out. She she's going to come back at one point and go crazy on her. Um, some that I would like to see that I've been in talks with. Uh, you have two New Jersey girls that I would love to see make their way to IWC as Vicious Vicky or Notorious Mimi would both go over well here. Um, okay. 
along with some OVWs that, you know, we always talk about OVW, I think Hollywood Haley J would stir up the crowd in Elizabeth. Wow. I like these names. Definitely some great names. Um, How about you? We all- I was going to say I really like anytime Megan Myers is in town. Yes. Um, I actually got to see her wrestle against Katie. Um, shout out to Erie. <laughs> that Woo-hoo! was a good match. Um, yeah, always always excited to see Megan Myers show up. Ella Shea, I think she may get some tea yes. on a few people, and she might be able to get some um, uh, maybe a title title shot in return because you know she's going to get the scoop and she's going to get what she wants. So. Ella Shea, there you go. Um, oh, yeah, I mean, sure. there's a lot. You have, um, oh gosh, what was it Proving Ground on YouTube? You have Danny Gray, who hosts that a few times. She could also kind of try to be in the title hunt. So there's there's a lot. I mean, I don't know who the number one contender would be at this point. I but... don't know if there legitimately on paper is one. You would just have the, the champion getting her returning title shot. Time after time. Zoe Sky. Zoe, Zoe Scott. Sky. Yeah. That was a great match last time. So, yes, I'm really excited to see where the direction this women's division goes. I, I agree. Uh, Especially I'll... now that we also have some 90-day, no competes, Ooh, running up. Yeah. So... We have seen um, Chelsea Green in IWC before. Her and Britt tore down the house a couple times. Yes. Hello. I love myself some Chelsea Green. Me too. So I, um, yeah, I would love to see Chelsea. That's actually who I was thinking of. So yeah, so hopefully Chelsea Green makes an appearance and um, her and Katie, they, they they stir up some trouble in the ring. So we'll have to tag her in this podcast because she's got an amazing podcast. Let's take a minute for, do you listen to her podcast? Love it. I have. And I've also had the opportunity to get on Rebels. Um, Zoom in which she had Chelsea Green on as a guest, and Chelsea Green actually talked about IWC. See, I I tag Chelsea in a lot of stuff. And spoiler alert: everybody knows that I'm getting this um, wrestling sticker tattoo arm sleeve. Um, Chelsea's lips are going to be on my arm in about a month. I only have four right now. One's The Undertaker. One's Dusty Rhodes. I have The Rock. And then I have my pit one because I'm a pit alum, but more to come. And a spoiler that the everybody else knows: uh, the runway is getting their uh, logo on my arm as well. That's how much I love them. Chelsea Green's lips and the runway—that is a statement, it, right? Her, so if her you pride wind, lips, yeah. So if you wind up like passed out after a night at the carriage inn, and the police need to identify you, it's going to say, "And there's a gentleman with two tattoos." Lips and very glittery men. Right? It, it, it's going to be in the, you know, it's going to make the rounds in Ridgeway. So, yeah. <sighs> but this match ended with Katie Arquette winning. Of course, she is the defending women's champion, which brings us to her next match. It does. And this match was quick and easy. And man, what a beat down. It was Spencer Slade taking on Philip Archer. Spencer, my homeboy, just dominates, and oh, wow! I I, I can't say I, I've had Spencer on the show twice now, and everything he's doing up and down the East Coast, anywhere he goes, he is another one that is not going to be around long. I know what a specimen. Like, yeah. Just talented in the ring, great physique. He has the look. Fear the gear. Fear the gear. Yeah. Meanwhile, there I am behind Spencer getting donuts in the <laughs> during the match. So. Are you watching it right now? Oh yeah. <laughs> so you're fast forwarding as we as we go. I am. Yeah. Oh. And clearly, you see someone as fit as him, and then I'm like right behind him going to the concession area. So I'll let you take no, on this match. That's it. No, the, the, nothing against Philip Archer. Uh, we've seen him continue to grow and grow and grow over the years. But Spencer's just, he's locked and loaded. He's just ready to go, and he just crushes. It, it, it's that fast. Spencer's just. Yeah. I know. I he know. needs and to be I, around and a and title. I know, and I'm a fan of Archer too. He's one of the, I believe, the four Hoffman. Yep. Um, so yeah, this is just, oh, 
I mean, you know, Spencer's been on the road a lot lately, so he's been continuing to um, just get better and better. After the match, we get somewhat of a blackout, and an hourglass pops up on the screen, and nobody has a clue what's going on. But when the lights come back on, um, the beaten down, destroyed Archer has disappeared. So, what does that mean? Any thoughts? How long was the blackout for? Uh, you were there, maybe. No, I was fifteen donuts. seconds. You were you were getting donuts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you literally were getting donuts. Um, I was getting donuts. It, I'm so sorry to Archer and to Spencer Slade. Yeah, it was about 15 seconds that, boom, the lights went out, an hourglass came on the Tron, boom, came back up. Lendl looked like uh, he was surprised he got a new puppy for his birthday. And that was about it. <laughs> so you didn't even see the hourglass. I did not, no. You, you didn't fast forward that fast yet. Oh, wait, now I see it. Oh. Hmm. Good. Good. Okay, so there is an hourglass, everybody, with red. I have an idea what that's about. Well, tell us. So a couple matches ago, if you remember, actually last event, remember when Angelic, mm -hmm. right? It's all about time. Mm -hmm. Angelic went through the table, and when he got up, he was just a bloody mess. That's exactly but what was, I was thinking. Right? He had a different look on his face. Yes. Different. Different Angelic looks. So I think someone... I don't know. Maybe he makes an appearance tonight. I'm not sure, but I'm thinking that is all about Angelic. Oh, okay. Okay. I was thinking it's just a, a prelude to time to bring Gory back in time. Oh, now we're having a little bit of conflict of emotion. Yeah. Yes. That's a good one. Yes. So now this brings us to the, um, this is interesting, a world championship match. Yeah. So early. Uh, I thought there could have been another match or two prior to this. But, no, we get Andrew Palace, IWC Heavyweight Champion, taking on Derek Dillinger. And I didn't know a lot about Derek prior to the reset button. He came out in the reset button last month. But this month, I have now dug into Derek Dillinger. And I love everything about Derek Dillinger. Uh, I love I his do art style. I do, too. I would cross him. Yeah, the, the Kevin Owens type bastard mm. in him. Yeah. Yes. I like Kevin Owens. Right. I figured you did. Yeah, so, I mean, here he, he comes to the ring all smiley, but, I mean, some of his backstage shenanigans, you know, harassing Katie and some of the other, some of the other colleagues of Andrew Palace, it, it was just a, this feud just started. It did. It really did. Um, and our homeboy, CJ, gets in the way and costs Derek, essentially, the IWC title because he's knocked out. Mm. Yeah. I know. I know. That was quite scary. The X got thrown up to everybody. Um, there was certainly a stinger. With, it was just a kind of a pile driver by Andrew Palace during this match. And, yeah, I mean, pretty much the match had to be pretty much called off, right? I mean, Palace won, but... Well, no, CJ got clotheslined. Oh, with that part. I'm sorry. I... I... I skipped. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Continue. No, no, no. <laughs> CJ got knocked down, clotheslined, or something that he was down. And then, yes, that Andrew took a hell of a, a pile driver, a bumper, or whatever. And then, you know, Dillinger's on him one, two, three, four, 25, 50. And there's nobody around. No, not at all. So you really yeah, fast forward. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But uh, Andrew does collect himself, and once CJ gets his ass up off of the ground, uh, Andrew does pick up the win. But there, there's more to come with this. There really is. Derek needs to, not an IWC original, but he needs to be in the family. Because if he doesn't end up taking this from Palace at some point... He's just in the mix of everything. He'd be a great high stakes champion. He oh. he could be in the Super Indie, especially since yeah. Super Indie is thrown out the window of being high flyers anymore. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I mean, this is such a great match. I mean, anything Palace does is a great match. Uh, well, let's let's banter here about this. Um, I know Palace has a little bit of a different um, mood 
flavor right now, if you may. I still want his old music back. I don't. I, I don't like his new music. I do miss his old music too. I like his current music. I mean, you know, how can you not get down to that song? But um, which is Queen, I believe. It is Queen. But I do miss, yeah, Party Party. Yeah, Man. it always got me fired up. And he he's not. When we had him on the show, we talked about that. Andrew runs around the ring actually to loosen up. It's not that sometimes he wants to give high fives to Kayla or myself or Soup or anybody else. He runs around the ring to warm up for the match. Then he gets in the ring because it just gets everything flowing. He doesn't do that anymore, so it takes him maybe five minutes to get going in the match. Mm. Yeah, so better he's offense. Still on with him. Yeah. Maybe maybe it's maybe it's working better for him though because he is the champion. He is the champion. Touche. Ooh. Yeah, so this match um, actually went out into the fans. It went it's all over. To a point. So, yeah, he got tossed out by Andrew Pallas, and now they're bringing it back in. And actually, CJ, you're right, CJ's been interfering in this match. He actually instructed Andrew to not go out into the fans. Yeah. And bring his, you know, and fight his opponent. You know, sometimes CJ is, you know, Potter is the, you know, senior official there. But there's sometimes that see, uh, CJ seems to be the senior official, and he, he's running, and he's doing great things. But then there's sometimes that CJ has moments like this match that he forgets he's an official, and he goes back to CJ Sensation, and he actually wants to be in the ring. A couple ways. I do have to say CJ is a fair ref, but yeah, I mean, I wouldn't mind seeing the return of CJ Sensation. Right. I think he has some axes to grind with some of these guys. Oh, he sure does. Uh, shout out to Joe Mandak, too, because he was an official there yes. as well. Because we, we mentioned every other official. Um, and Joe Mandak, the most physical official in IWC pipes, we like to call him here on Can't Crushers. <laughs> because he is ripped. Okay, so the next match, uh, after Palace wins, we talked about that, uh, is, and I have to scroll, is Henry O. Godwin taking on Chase Gold in LSU. Yeah. So, yeah, so one thing we wanted to add is bef- is this match ends. CJ calls oh, the Oh, touche, good call. Yeah, good call. Okay, thank you. I mean, I can't, you can't miss this detail. So, um, Drew, correct? Derek. Derek, what am I saying Drew for? Derek, sorry. <laughs> and Drew Palace, Derek. Dillizek. Andrew, Derek, yeah, what's wrong with Close. Derek, excuse me, I don't know, what am I saying Drew for? So, Derek, really takes this pile driver combination by palace and Derek is not getting up and you can clearly see on the network you can see there in the crowd cj puts up the x everybody knows what that means it's somebody needs medical attention Derek is not getting up that's probably why i got thrown off Derek is not getting up um it's taking Derek forever to get up at this point and what i found was odd is Derek is on is now able to kind of hobble on the outside of the ring so he's on the he's on the he's on the other side of the ring. There is even a promo going on with LSA and um, Chase Gold. Say it right. Chase Gold. <laughs> Derek is still out there. There is a man down. He is still out there. And what happened? Ding da ding da ding da ding. Here comes Henry Godwin. While a man is hurt on the outside of the ring with maybe about three officials around him. So, I'll let you continue. Oh, Godwin comes out to Don't Go Messing With Country Boy, first of all, exactly. which is a great yeah. album. Which album did you like better, the first wrestling album or Piledriver? I, I am a WrestleMania, the album girl. I made up dance routines for that in junior high. I know all the words. Um, never Been a Right Time to Say Goodbye by Bret Hart. <laughs> Such an emotional tune. So that's my album. It is your album. Do you still have it on vinyl? I do. And, uh, no, it was actually one of the first CDs I bought with my paper out money. And I also have um, WCW Slam Jam. I never got that. I nev- oh, it was so good. It has Two Cold Scorpio. It has Ron Simmons, Don't Step to Ron, which maybe we'll have to have a karaoke night. Oh, yes. And I can bust out that song. Yes. So get back to wrestling. Um, Derek Dillinger kind of re- um, bumps into Godwin, and they just have a – Kind of a uh, Iron Sheik, Sergeant well, Slaughter. Yeah, I mean, Derek felt disrespected. You think about it. Like, here he is working for IWC tonight. He gets injured. 
And rather than like, um, you know, let's take some time to get this guy out in a respectful way, they bring out Henry Godwin. And it's like, okay, I guess I have to walk out during your entrance. I mean, I understand time is of the essence on Fight TV, but this creates some problems down the road for Henry Godwin. It does. And it does. And maybe that was the issue with Godwin because he was in, um, maybe Dillinger was in his head the whole time because Godwin was off a little bit in this match as fast forward, we can talk about it, but fast forward, Chase Gold gets a surprise victory over Godwin and Ella looks great too, by the way. Ella Ella is one of my favorites. Ella always looks beautiful. And I think another reason to this fight of one is as much as we love the romper, he had on a different style, different style gear. He did. Saturday. It's a singlet with flowers on it instead of, you know, my grandma's drapes. <laughs> with Chase Gold down the back. Right. Right. But he sm- I still smelled the lavender and vanilla scent from Elizabeth to Ridgeway when it was being sprayed over the IWC network for only nine ninety nine a month, broadcasted <laughs> by two to one media. I smelled that the whole way here. That's how pungent and good smelling it is. I I you know what? Yeah. And I mean Are you getting the I, smell right now as you watch the match? Yeah, I'm not smelling the vanilla though. I'm just smelling a nicely smelling man. Which is hard in wrestling to get a good it smelling is. man. Well especially because of the slop bucket also in view of the camera. Oh, oh, I just meant in general. See, you're not pulling punches on fans like I do. You're being nice. You're being very PC. No. Well, no, that could be another story. Right. That (laughs) That could be the, that would be the, um, the after show. Yes. So, uh, Godwin takes a loss and just like, all right, peace out, I'm out of here. Um, I wonder if Derek's on his mind. He really didn't do much afterwards. I wonder if God, my thoughts are, I hope God wins in IWC for a while. Because realistically, he's been rejuvenated recently, and he's he's big, and I hope he stays in IWC. Because it's nice to see him there. He could do a lot of work for um, the guys and gals backstage, help them out. I mean, we'll lower the curtain a minute here. He's been to the top. He's been around mega, mega, mega stars. And if he's around IWC to help as, you know, a trainer or just somebody like an advisor or something, I think that's another gold star for Jenny Plummer and Justin Plummer. Yeah, I would agree. Such such a such a such a veteran. I mean and but the fact that um Derek made it a point to attack him is I think we're gonna see Derek Dillinger as a just mm, he, he's gonna be very unpredictable for months to come. Yeah, he is. He is. And next up because he attacks Henry Godwin. Yeah, he I I know. I know. I mean that sucks. But that means Godwin's going to be around, and that's what I'm excited for, too. And Derek yeah. Dillinger should be your IWC heavyweight champion. Sorry, Andrew. <laughs> Write that down. That, yeah. could, that could be another predictions too. prediction, too. Right? Second half of the year. Woo-woo. Uh, your homeboys, the Godwins, taking on Hardcore Hammer Time. Wait, and the who's? A Hardcore Hammer Time. The your home oh you, the Gambinos. You, you, call, <laughs> you call the Gambinos the Godwins. Okay. I'm dead. Two. I'm dead. Take two. No, that's not getting cut out. We don't cut anything out on our show. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> that would be great if the Godwins would take on the uh hardcore hammer time, but it wasn't. It was the Gambinos taking on it, hardcore hammer time. I told you. I'm actually Gambinos. on number two. Yeah, shout out to Mike um for getting them some red, white, and blue smearnoffs. That they are chugging before the match, like the hardcore gentlemen they are. Before the match, this match never happened. Because when South Philly comes flying out, um, shit comes hard. There's any kind of whatever you could think of weapon, and they're there. Boom. This is a yeah. feud that's been going on for a year, and it could be... Uh, the feud that goes on for a decade. Yeah, and, and, and at this point, you know, you should have hardcore ho- har- hardcore hooven time, hardcore <laughs> hammer time. Oh, good. They, so they, I'm not the only they, one messing up right now, Megan. Right, I know. See, this is a tag team that really should be in the hunt for the belt. They should be. They should be 
trying to be number one contenders, not messing around with the Gambinos, for God's sake. And here's another example of, again, someone snapping tonight. It's, it happened so much. This was an unpredictable night. Plummer called it. It's continuing again. Hardcore Hammer Time just snapped. They snapped. They have their, their chairs, and they are just beating up the security guy in the ring. I mean, the... Decimating him. That I have not heard... Oh, hold on. Oh, that chair shot. Oh, my God. It made me sick to my stomach. So, have, have you heard it over the network yet? Because if it sounded great now. in house, it has. It sounded great over the network. It sounded more disgusting in house. It really did to where we just all cringed. But yeah, that that was. It was not good. So these two guys, they're just ticking time bombs. Hooven's pissed. Jamie is. He, he's just going to blow up again. So I am very curious to see what these guys do over the next few months. But again, this is a team that instead of trying to get these titles, they are, they're dicking around with the Gambinos because the Gambinos made it personal by going after, I mean, it's just, I mean, so many things going after Jamie's wife and everything else. So, you know, hopefully um, the Gambinos find someone else to bother and HHT, they get some belt. Uh, this has to happen, though, at Cage Fury. Th- th- there has yeah, to be one more blow off at Cage Fury, but I don't know if a cage can handle these guys. Like, it needs to maybe Plummer brings in the war games and just puts those four into war games because the cage at IWC can be torn down by Jamie Jameson himself because he is a man oh my beast. God. He throws a guy. Just, just into the cage. The cage is going to collapse. Or Hooven brings in, you know, bolt cutters, and he'll just smash. You know, he'll just take the cage down. He yeah. Has a weapon. So yeah. So the Very match, the match doesn't happen. It ends up being a no contest. The Gambinos kind of just walk out, saying, "Hey, uh, not tonight. We'll fight another day because you guys are insane in the membrane." Yeah, and RIP, RIP, <laughs> RIP, RIP to the innocent party, which was the um, IWC security guy in the ring that got beat up by chairs. Yeah, God bless you. Uh, next matchup is Bulk Nasty taking on your sex symbol, Megan. Your oh, sex yes. symbol. Which one? Jock. <laughs> you oh, yes. you <laughs> always want some jock. You would take jock anytime. And the stipulation is a match. If Jock wins, he gets the reset button. But if Balk wins, he retains the reset button, actually gets the computer back, and the regulators are no more. Yeah, and, and yeah, exactly. And these are stipulations that were created by Balk, as well as Plummer, last event. So this is um, pretty monumental. The regulators had, have had a good run for almost two years. Two years. Yeah. Tag team titles, world heavyweight title, legions of fans. Did you buy a Team Bulk shirt Saturday night? I did not yet, and I'm also a Bulk Nasty fan, so you are. I am. So this this was very conflicting, but um, I kind of felt like I grew up in IWC with the regulators. So this this was personal. Ooh, so this is the, the line has been drawn then. I always joke that you are a, you know, fangirl for Jock Sampson, but True Colors coming out that you legit were pulling that the regulators stayed together then. I am. I They, they cannot break up. They cannot break up. But I also want Bulk Nasty just to destroy everyone in IWC. So this, this was hard. He is a human crime scene. He really is. But, but also, Jock, you need to be fair. It was not your reset button. Oh, look at the mom coming out in you now. You gonna slap his hand and set him <laughs> in the corner? Yeah, that's it. Time oh, out. It's it's wrestling, Megan. It, it's not. Oh, be good. I know pe- people need to use their manners, but anyway. So let's continue with this match. Everybody and everybody and everybody, come down from the regulators. Get involved. Uh, beat down bulk. I thought this is where it's going. They're going to piss off the fans and they're going to be fine with it because you can't send them home happy all the time. You can't. And no. I thought, Jock's going to win this and he might not be able to catch it in successfully, but just having him have that reset button for another three, four months would have been a great ride. And you notice I used the word would because it didn't happen. Would. 
Yeah, I mean, he he is the GOAT. He is a veteran. He usually finds a way to win. But, man, Balk Nasty is on a tear. And, yeah, I mean, his look says it all. And how does the match end? Well, first of all, Xander comes in to help after he gets – did you get a picture with Xander Big Head? I did not. I'm very sad I did not. I am, too. Hopefully he brings it back. I, I we really can talk w- about intermission because some things went to him in the intermission, too. Oh, what happened during intermission? I, I I only got to see the the ring for 15 minutes. Let's rewind the intermission. What did you do? More donuts in intermission? No, not more donuts. Intermission was actually before the HHT versus right, it uh, was. the Ambino match. So real quick, um, Swole Patrol. They got into it with Brotherly Love, Ricky Dawkins and Cliff Klepto, and they called them fat, and they were knocking Philly, and you know what? They were not, Brotherly Love wasn't putting up with it, and there was a big fight. There was actually a match around the fans (laughs) during intermission. Really? Damn it. Yeah. So hopefully we'll get to see them in the ring next show. And also, um, Cole Carter had quite a bevy of female fans around him. Well, he is it a was, Von Erich. It, it, I, it was it was like the days of the Von Erichs or the Rock and Roll Express, from what I was told, or it was the day that I had um, Shawn Michaels on my wall. It was just a lot of women surrounding Cole Carter, and somehow I got stuck taking about taking everyone's picture. I became the photographer for Cole Carter during intermission. Look at you working, working schmoozing your way right in there. You see that I AEW know. money with Cole Carter. Oh yeah, that that's that's yeah. Hey, there's an idea. Quit my current job, but um, I think I'm kind of deflect from the fact that the end of this match did make me sad. I know you and are, and I think that's why I'm talking about intermission is I'm trying to deflect. But I'll let you share the news. Xander tries to help, and we get Jack Pollock coming out. As all the regulators are now, but Pollock chases LaRusso back and Balk just finishes. Finishes. Jock Sampson. Boom. Mm. Decimated one, two, three. All the regulators are looking disappointed. And Megan, I want to put a spin on this. Balk does get the reset button. He shushes the crowd. He yells to him, does his thing. But I see the regulators not being the regulators because they just have to disband and not be the regulators anymore. I'd like them to be something else down the line. It's wrestling. Come on. They can come back as like lawless in order part two. I, you know, I haven't seen a team this defeated since the um, 2008 Penguins lost the Stanley Cup final. It was beard depression i mean that's what it looked like and it it brought me back to a very sad time in my life so yeah a lot going on but on the bright side though bulk the fans got what they want bulk nasty reset button he's going after some championship so just know that reset button you could use it for super indie you can use it for high stakes or you can use it for that world title so Reference though, he's he's called out Andy Palace a couple times, and Palace yeah. actually shows up at ringside, and Balk's like, "Come on, come on," and again, both of them just got done with a match, so it wouldn't be hundred percent. So let's wait to fight another day when one they can showcase their talents for all of us, and they can beat the snot out of each other. Yeah, I think Balk's exactly. gonna be a bigger man, and tell Palace what he's going to cash it in instead of doing the cheap shot. Balk's been a nice human being recently since he can read. Yep. Balk is pretty straight <laughs> since he can read. You know, he was reading books during quarantine. He, so I, he really, um, I watched it. Yeah. I, I, that was something I had to watch alongside uh, Jack Pollock and Chris LaRusso, which one was going to pass out first. Oh, man. And that brings us to the next match, right? These go from um, drinking guys. buddies. Drinking, it was like, you know, they used to be like Ted Turner talking about Turner um, classic movies and drinking and almost passing out. So now, Chris LaRusso was accused of being the one that attacked Jack Pollock and took him out of business for eight months. Yeah, and since the regulators have been disbanded, Chris LaRusso comes out to 1980s generic jobber music that Jesse the Mark finds instantly. 
And you have a defeated already, Chris LaRusso, knowing that he's not part of the regulators, don't even make reference of it. And Jack comes out, and Megan, these guys have had on and off friendship for 20 plus years. These guys know each other like Steamboat and Flair, and these guys do not have a yeah. bad match at any time. No, no. And this was one of the matches I was most excited for. I didn't realize it was going to happen so soon after the regulators. Right. You know. Ended on um, this match. I mean, the first few minutes of this match aren't even in the ring. Larusa was waiting for for um, Pollock. Yeah, he tries to jump him, but Jack's too smart. He knows. He knows that something's going to be up with Larusa. He always kinds of bend the rules a little bit. Yeah, he he knows this guy. He knows this guy. And again, this match is still outside. Um, I mean, even there was even a point during this match you were kind of afraid for Jack's knee. Yeah. Um, well, he so, falls I mean, on it hard one time, um, and you wonder, oh, no, did he just injure himself? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly it. And then, but you know, that LaRusso knows the parts to go after during the match, because that's, that's LaRusso. Hard shots back and forth, though, overall. And Jack normally has been using, like, the kick to the face, um, a version of the Claymore, if you guys don't know what it is. But it's kind of like a, click, a kick to the face. But Jack doesn't go with that. He uses the sharpshooter, which is more... LaRusso has to quit. He has to tap out. So it's a statement victory for Jack saying, you're done. And then he grabs a mic and says, if you didn't, who did? And then all of a sudden, lights out again. And Megan, who is here? Wow, yeah. Um, We don't know who's here. And... It, 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 there was some time. I mean, you you have this hooded figure with someone else with him, to be honest. There's two people in the ring. And all the fans around me are making guesses about who could have attacked him. Could it be someone we maybe haven't seen for a while? Could it be um, Gory was mentioned or Angelic was mentioned? Um, so we didn't really know who it could have been. And Did you um, have a I'll guess? Let's... Because I have one, and I'm okay. actually disappointed. I'll go first. So I did want to talk about this. So I did have, so what was funny was I actually had a guess and I took my guess away. What? And the reason, and, and I, and I, and I, if I tell you my guess, then I'll be giving away who it was. So do you want to reveal first before I oh. tell you my guess? Okay, sure. Mine was Jimmy Nuts. Really? Why? Because Pollock and Nuts have had a feud that goes way back and Nuts didn't get a title shot um, after he got injured one of the times and Pollock ended up being, you know, a champion down the line and we haven't seen Jimmy nuts in a while. And I'm like, no, no, he my... did that ladder match and that was it. Yeah. And I'm like, man, this would be, and I'm a mark for Jimmy nuts. I I'm seen on the IWC network for only nine 99 a month, um, by two to one media. It, I, we got them all in, right? We shouldn't have to do any more of those. Maybe. No, you can do one more. You have to do. I heard you have to do say something seven times for people to fully comprehend. So oh. you have a few more. Okay. Um, you see me pushing a child out of the way when Jimmy Nuts makes his big return um, at the beginning of last year prior to COVID. Da, 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 da. Legitimately, yes. I push a child out of the way so I can be the first person to touch Jimmy Nuts. Oh, I was 43 at that time. To touch Jimmy Nuts. Okay, I'm glad you said it the correct way because it could have been taken in <laughs> so many different contexts. But, yeah, so so Jimmy Nuts was a really good guess. Um, there were fans behind us with a few guesses that I revealed. I was thinking it was probably one member of Team Storm. Jackson Argos coming back would have been, wow, incredible. Um, but too tall I for that. Too tall for that. Yeah. So, well, you never know. People could put things in their shoes or whatever. I don't know. I wasn't even thinking about that, to be honest. But yeah, so it is revealed um, who attacked Jack Pollock and then who attacked him again in the ring. And the person who attacked him is R.C. Dupree. R.C. Dupree. And I initially thought R.C. Dupree, but I took it away because if you remember when Argos and Pollock were feuding, and Jack Pollock got beat up by that kendo stick. There came a point where R.C. Dupree said to Jackson Argos, hey, cool it, knock it off, stop. He was coming pretty much kind of to the verbal aid of Jack Pollock. 
But then whenever you had at the end of 2019, you had that championship match. R.C. Dupree is like, you know what the hell with both of these guys and ended up beating them both. But but then you I thought it was thought, done then. I, you thought it was done, right? You thought it was done. But obviously, um, R.C., very, very cerebral. And um, he he was just letting his opponent think that he just slept on it. And that was not the case. And Jack is laid out. Done. Yeah. RC and this big man walk out together, and it was a statement made. So, again, this is another setup for months down the line. Um, will Jack be able to be at Cage Fury? He he took a hell of a beating. He I did. I, I don't know. Um, but RC, I mean, the, the boys from the Accenture session was probably going crazy. Oh my gosh, they love their RC. And I mean, and again, this was a night where everyone snapped as Plummer promised and predicted unpredictable night. It surely was an unpredictable night. And to lead us with more unpredictability, we knew we were going to get a great match with Matthew, Matthew Justice and Bill Collier for the Super Indy title. But holy, I'll let you fill in the blank. Shit. You're just being PC. I will say it. I don't care. It's always marked extreme. And this match I'm was a extreme. Lady. You are a lady. You are a fancy lady. Um, I don't know if I can look at the Super Indie Championship any other way. If, if it was maybe just Matthew Justice or Fonzie being there rubbing it. But this, first of all, this is already the match of the year in IWC. I, I, I don't care what poll is up. This is, and every fan there is going to agree. This is a match of the year for IWC. Good luck trying to break that. This needs to be thrown all over the world so people can see it because you have two six foot plus men flying all over where all over the place, taking weapons and doing whatever you can with them. And then I thought somebody was going to die, Megan. I legit thought somebody was going to die. And then yeah, I the mean, bigger guy uh, jumps on him after he's dead. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for those that have been to court time and that wa are able to watch from home, court time has two levels. And there is an upper level, guys. <laughs> Bill Collier threw Matthew Justice off the upper level onto a table. And then Bill Collier is like, hey, I'm just going to jump off on him. Unbelievable. I have never seen anything like that ever. Unbelievable. And again, there, yeah, there were a lot of awesome spots during this match. But the passion of these two guys, they put everything into it. I, I mean, what a what a grudge. Like what a I mean, just this match was just incredible. And yeah, and again, the um oh my god, it, it just never ended. I was just out of my seat the entire time. Breaking it down would do no justice. I mean we we, 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 we can't give, break it down. No. That'd be silly. Yeah. To to break it down, you need to watch it. You really do. Um because it was just Unbelievable. At home, I was out of my seat. And then to see when Justice gets brought back to the ring by Collier, I thought, all right, that's the perfect way for Collier's statement to win this match. Mm -hmm. Justice kicks out, wipes his hand across his face because he's bleeding everywhere and then licks his own oh blood. Gosh. And I'm like, holy balls. I still didn't think, though, Megan, I still didn't think that we were going to get a new super indie champion, but more chairs, more this, more that get brought in and we get a new super indie champion in Matthew justice. And hopefully Fonzie's with them all the time too, because it just makes sense. This was, this was ECW all over again. Um, unbelievable. Um, yeah. I mean, gosh, I mean there, this match had everything it had, you know, actual wrestling. It had. It was a street fight. It. Oh my gosh! I just saw that table shot again. Holy crap! Right. I, I mean, I felt guilty for what I paid for my ticket seeing this because this was just such an unbelievable match. I mean, at this point, I was ready to say, "Take my money," because I just match of the year. Yeah, Matt, across the board. I mean, I I have match uh, like Adam Cole and. Kyle O'Reilly that I think is great. Both of them. 
this this is match of the year across the world, the galaxy. Whatever. This is just unbelievable what they did. An emotional, yeah, an emotional match, and. I have to say, you know, with with me kind of coming back into the fold of professional wrestling two years ago, I wasn't that familiar with Matthew Justice, and shame on me. Shame on um, you. And this is two AEW Dark alums as well. Let's not forget that. So these are national time guys. And um, what a match! What a match! And um, do you want to talk about how it ends? Yeah. Well, after Justice gets the win, uh, Collier grabs the title. And I thought, oh man, this is this is going to lead to another one. This is going to lead to yeah, another. Someone one. else going to snap tonight? Yeah. And Collier does the right thing. He he just he shakes his hand, hands over the belt, and then Justice is standing on the ropes. Collier uh, and Fonzie's pointing at him, and that's the way the network goes off. But it looked to me, and this is where I need to come to you. Like, Collier has to tell us something as he's sitting on the bottom rope. So did Collier speak to the Court Time fans? Yes. And one thing I want to say is if any fans happen to have this on video, um, please upload it to IWC on Facebook. So, and tag Mark in it. <laughs> Can't pressure so they can watch it. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, just the classiest thing. I, I mean, I'm surprised Matthew Justice wasn't dead and Bill Collier weren't dead. But somehow, Matthew Justice with his belt and with his Fonzie, he pulls up a chair. He sits ringside as Bill Collier grabs a microphone and talks. And everyone is chanting, thank you, Bill, giving this fighting we know. We the know. applause and the respect that he deserves. He's had such a remarkable year. And Bill Collier went on to say, you know, I'm not done. Do you think I'm done just because I lost the Super Indie belt? And it kind of t- told us that either he is going to come back for that belt He's going to go for the world championship. Who knows what's next for Bill Collier, but I think it's just beginning. Yeah. It, and it, that's kind of what he implied. It is just beginning for him. He is he is the one that we speak about time and time again that he needs to be on a bigger show. And we love him at IWC. Um, personally know him. I love him on IWC. But tell me Amazing. that – the world doesn't need to see him and Ward logo at it again. I know. I know. Must. 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 All the Wardlow matches, all the Bill Collier matches. Where can you find them, Megan? Yes. <laughs> Hit the IWC network for only nine ninety nine a month, right? I think that's is that time number seven. Yeah, guys, nine ninety nine. But uh, yeah, what an awesome event. For those of you that have not been down to see local wrestling. I mean, it's not even local. I mean, this is just... It is the best promotion this, on the East Coast. This is national. I mean, just a hotbed of professional wrestling yeah. that you have in Cleveland, Buffalo, Pittsburgh, and West Virginia. I mean, it is... There's a reason why these guys are on national TV. Yeah. So, Megan, we we do our ratings off of a six-pack. So, out of six beers or six White Claws or six martinis or whatever you were drinking, because we'll talk a little bit about the after party. I, I want to know what okay. happened there. What did you think about the card overall? And let me throw this caveat in. I know where you're going already. Um, first time IWC is allowed back full capacity. So, that in itself just gives that whole humbling feeling is you're around – your brothers, your sisters, all your cousins, and you're just happy to be at what we call home, court time sports. Yeah, you know what? I think um, I'm going to definitely give this 5.5 page peach cooler drinks. What? So this one, what drinks? Yeah. My friend Paige for tailgating, she made a peach drink, which oh, okay. was amazing, and it was in a huge orange cooler. So um, that's what I'm going to give that. Five and a half cups of those. Why Why did you take a half a cup away? Because the Gambinos drank all your alcohol? Not the yeah, God that wins. Could be, that could be one of the reasons. I know. That could be one of the reasons. But you know what? I think it's only going to get better and better for IWC. So you don't so want to I top off yet? I don't want to top off yet. No. There's still there's still more to come. Okay. And, all right. Touche. I'm giving it six. I always give I, I give sixes. Oh, wow. What, look at you. I do. And, it, and I wasn't there. So it would have probably been like a 12-pack, an illegal 12-pack, um, because across the board, there, there wasn't, and I'm in the guys listening, I know, there wasn't a bad 
ho hum match from you know Chase Gold surprising me to my homeboys of the runway getting decimated, but they had a good outing. They're there. They're going to be around. To bringing it home with Justice and Collier, tell me, tell me where there wasn't a moment where you're like, oh, the whole night was crazy. I was just glad we didn't see Plummer on TV. That would have brought it down to a 5.5. I, I have to say Fight TV is just, they have to be beside themselves at this point. The fact that, wow, we had a card like this on our channel. Right. And exactly. So, um, I mean, congratulations to all the men and women that were involved with this show. I mean, unbelievable that women's match. I mean, you know, Katie Arquette and Allie Catch, that was a definitely one personal favorite of mine. The main event, um, you know, the Super Indie match, I mean, it was just it, it was just top to bottom, an amazing card. So again, we're back full capacity and anybody, if you have not been to an IWC show, get to one. Yeah, IWCWrestling.com. The next event is August 14th. It's called Cage Fury. If you thought the main event of Justice and Collier was crazy, wait till you see uh, three, four, five matches in a freaking steel cage at IWC. Yeah, and I forgot to mention, um, Bill Collier challenged Matthew Justice to a steel cage. Right, he did. Yep. So, So we have to mention that again. So, yeah, so... The rematch of the rematch. Good God. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have to recover for a few days after that weekend. How How is that? Well, yeah, because you're going to AEW the night before. And are you going and Wednesday as well? Before that. Yeah. yeah, I'm going to AEW Wednesday and Friday. And then we have, um, there's a Steel City Con. And there, is, I'm not going to Steel City Con, but there's a Steel City Con. And there's AEW that night. So um, for those that are out of town, coming into town for AEW, um Stay an extra day, go to Steel City Con, and check out IWC. Yeah, Steel City Con will have uh, Miro and Orange Cassidy there signing autographs. Yes. So, and Britt Baker's always going to be in town. You don't know where she's going to pop up. Uh, We always have to talk about Mm -hmm. Britt Baker. Um, Unpredictable. Unpredictable. So, after party, it was down at the carriage inn where it always is. And we spoke about this as I'm going to reach out to Jenny Plummer. I'm going to get October's. We're going to have the Halloween costume. You're going to come dressed up as Alley Catch. I'm going to be Arn Anderson. John's going to be Ginger Mahal. Um, no, I'm going to dress up as Abaddon. Oh, uh, Abaddon. That's right. Damn it. Yeah, Abaddon. You better. If you don't, I'm going to be mad. I mean, if, if Alley Catch will let me borrow her outfit, I mean, I. It, it, I, I I don't think I could rock it as well as Alley Catch, but um, I can definitely. Um, I'll go for Abaddon. Okay, go for Abaddon. Full paint and everything. I, I can't wait to see this. <laughs> yes. I, I'd like to be the queen of the silver screen, but there's only one Katie Arquette. There's only one. So. The, there's only one. Uh, what happened at the after party? Any shenanigans? Is uh, anything bad happen? I, I heard Mike's lemonade was very heavily drank there. Um, yeah, you know, I heard, um, you know, everyone came out, can't reveal too much of what goes on, you know, right. better respect, but, um, yeah, Brad, Brad, um, Bradley Brothers got a little bit overly excited on Mike's <laughs> hard lemonade. Nothing wrong with and, that. Uh, and the police came and threw him out and, um, he resisted arrest and I don't think we'll ever see him again. That's sad. As much as he is heel Bradley, that would be sad if we'd never see him again. It shows everybody how one drink can ruin your life. One Mike's Hard Lemonade can ruin the light, your life. And it could it ruined that man's life that night. Well, maybe we need to start a GoFundMe for him. He'll just spend it on more Mike's Hard Lemonades. No, I think he's learned his lesson. I think he Do has. Think? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He, he's not going to be heel Bradley anymore. He's going to be like the savior. Yeah, exactly. Um, one thing I wanted to, to do is to, is to mention real quick is about the carriage in. They did have specialty shots. That um, that were talked about on the IWC Facebook page. Did you try any of them? Um, I did not. Um, the one for Fonzie scared me. It had like three different hard liquors. Um, the um, oh, you know what? The Henry Godwin. I did have the bucket. I had a friend that had the bucket. The Henry Godwin. So Henry Godwin had a beer bucket. You know, bucket. Henry yeah. Godwin. Ha ha. Um, bulk mass tea. Money shot had their own drink, and I'm forgetting one more. Whose was it? I don't I, remember. I can't, remember. I can't pull it up because I'm on the computer and my phone at this time. So, 
I can't remember either. And um, yeah, if I, oh, um, Chase Gold, Chase Gold Schlager. There we go. That was the other group. So yeah, all fans were invited to hang out at the carriage after, have some amazing food, support a local restaurant that has provided us with great hospitality. And um, yeah, it, it, it was just all in all, pre, during, post, great night of wrestling and friendship. Yeah, for sure. And again, August 14th will be the next time IWC will be back. Megan, I will let you go with that. Do you have anything else you want to... Do you have pro wrestling tees that you want to sell or anything like that? Because uh, <laughs> that's where we usually tell everybody where to, you know, follow Megan at this social media, da, 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 and she's got pro wrestling tees or any merch or anything like that. I have no merch, but you know what I will do is say, you know what, support your favorite wrestler and buy merch. I mean, all you have to do is if there's someone you like that you saw on the network or you met at a show, ask how you can get merch. Follow them on social media. Um, and also, too, let's not forget with IWC, we have the most amazing fans in pro wrestling. Um, Wardlow, um, Wardlow's Dime on Instagram, by the way, huge fan of her. She's a great um, companion site to IWC. Wardlow is his name, I believe she is, on Twitter. Really enjoying that site lately. She's provided great recaps of the event, so check that out. Um, but no, no shirts. Just buy shirts of your favorite um, wrestlers and um, obviously IWCTs. For sure. For sure. Megan, you need to come back on. We need to – we do need to start just a normal podcast between us. We could just sit around on a Saturday night and drink and just talk about napping and doing dishes and stuff. This was – this was amazingly fun. I had the event in front of me, and I really didn't look at my notes that much because we we have a great um, companionship. I, I, what word am I looking for? Because now I'm on number three. Um, three beers. Don't forget, I've been up since 3 o'clock this morning, and uh, shoot time, it's now 7.30. Toots. We are... <laughs> We are good wrestling pals. We are good wrestling pals. Yeah, that's what it is. Um, all right. Do you know how to end this show? Do you, do you know the way if I lead you? I could not. I could not do you justice. So I'm going to have you do it. All right. Remember, Megan, just because you're trash doesn't mean you can't do great things. It's called the garbage can, not a garbage cannot. Garbage cannot. See, you knew it. 